The Jag 35 website currently has a great deal on these scooter battery packs. The cells appear to be in great condition, however the BMS included doesn't seem to allow the pack to discharge. In this video, I will show you a fix for this issue and how you can perform it on your own battery pack. Here I have two batteries. The top one is a stock battery and the bottom one has my fix applied. When I connect the power meter to the motor plus and motor minus wires of the original battery, like here, um, you can see that it does not turn on. So here I'll get the meter and when you plug it in here, it doesn't turn on. And so this is the fully charged and everything, so there is power in the battery, but it doesn't output anything. Here, when I do the same thing on the one which I have applied my fix, the meter does turn on and the battery does properly output power. I have more testing at the end of the video if you want to see the results. So what causes these issues is an electrical switch located right here. What we need to do is connect pin 3 on this IC to ground to force it to turn on the output. We can cut through the glue with the razor blade so we can get access to pin 3. You have to be very careful so you don't put too much pressure on the razor blade and cut through the PCB traces. If you do this, you can easily break the battery pack. Usually you can scrape away any extra with your fingers so don't be too worried about cutting everything away. You also have to be careful to not short out the pins. It most likely will not cause any issues if you do, but the most sensitive pin is pin 5, located 2 from the top in my view. This pin is the current sense feedback pin and does not operate at full battery voltage. I've had decent luck cutting around the chip like this and then pushing across the top to release the layers of glue. The next step is adding the pull down resistor on pin 3 and connection to ground. I use some thin wire wrapping wire, however any thin wire should work. Strip the insulation back a few millimeters and then solder it to pin 3, which is the third from the bottom in this orientation. You may have to scrape the pin with the soldering iron to remove excess gel so your solder will stick. If the solder doesn't stick, your connection most likely won't work and you will have to try again. Finally, we have to connect this wire to ground at the other side of the battery. Take a resistor with a resistance of approximately 1k ohms and connect one side to the ground pad on the end of the battery. There are other grounds available on the PCB, however this one is easily accessible. This is a large ground pad, so do not be surprised when it takes several seconds to heat it up properly so the solder will flow. Here I hold the iron for quite a few seconds, and then finally place the resistor. Now solder the other side of the resistor to the wire you just connected to pin 3. Don't forget the heat shrink before you solder the other side of the resistor. Finally, use a heat gun to shrink the heat shrink over the resistor so that nothing shorts out. At this point you are done and all you have to do is make sure that everything worked properly. We can verify that everything worked by measuring a few voltages on the battery pack. To do this, we need to measure the main cell voltage and the motor plus output voltage. If they are within a few millivolts, then this means that everything worked properly. If they are more than about a quarter volt apart, that means you probably messed up your soldering. If you measure no voltage on the output whatsoever, Try charging the battery through the plus bat and minus bat wires. Here is a performance test of a battery with my hack. I have a watt meter and small load connected to the output. You can see that the battery load correctly draws power from the battery pack. When the battery is discharged, I recommend charging the battery through the bat plus and bat minus lead since this is how it was charged in the previous use case. However, it probably can be charged through the motor plus and motor minus connectors just fine. I have not had a chance to test this as much. I use an MPPT charge controller configured for a 10S LiPo to output power to several of the batteries with their BAT plus and BAT minus connections in parallel. This should work fine for low loads where you are well under the maximum capabilities of each individual battery and they are of similar health. Finally, note that this video is not a complete fix but rather a hack, so it may have unintended consequences or dangers associated with it. 
Please post a comment if you were successful or if you ran into any issues. I have a few fun projects planned for these batteries, as well as videos fully reverse engineering these packs, so please subscribe if you'd like to see some videos about them.